as we try to unpack exactly what happened in last week's election and how Donald Trump won, there's one particularly disingenuous argument that has emerged. A new video of Joy Reid is going viral, and it's just the latest in a long line of meltdowns we've been keeping up with. Take a look. I think one of the losers here is condescending identity politics. We constantly try to parse out different ways of speaking to different cohorts because our focus groups or our polling shows that so-and-so appeals to such and such. That's not how normal people think. The dominance of identity politics on the left, which made it push for all kinds of DEI policies that largely came out of the urban academic bubble, but alienated many mainstream voters. The idea that identity politics was the problem for Democrats is laughable, considering it wasn't Vice President Kamala Harris who relentlessly focused on race or gender, either her own or anyone else's. That would be Donald Trump. In fact, it was Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance, who ran an identity politics entire campaign focused on men. They have an identity, too, you know. I mean, did, Trump did walk out to the song, It's a Man's World, at the Republican convention. And again, all the focus on identity politics came from Trump and Vance, not Democrats. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. We're talking a lot about Venezuela because Aurora is really infected by... Venezuela, but they're coming from all countries. There's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. We will get critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our school. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. The meat axe approach and also with denaturalization, meaning don't think because you have a green car and came through the right way, if you're brown, you may not stick around. I don't think they care whether you have a green card or not. They're yeah. pulling people out and taking people out of this country, whether they you like it or not. And it was the hip hop and Hulk Hogan generation, the F your feelings latchkey kids who came up on Dynasty, Dallas and The Apprentice, who were the lone age group that voted in a majority for Trump. A majority of Gen X voted to turn America into an autocracy and to condemn our kids and grandkids to a far-right Supreme Court, probably for the rest of their lives. And it was not just Gen X, because while 91% of black women voted for Kamala Harris, 53% of white women overall voted for Trump, despite the open disrespect and demonization hurled by J.D. Vance and the Supreme Court stripping women's bodily autonomy, courtesy of Donald Trump who closed his repulsive campaign by dropping the B word on Nancy Pelosi. Joy Reid's argument is interesting because she flips the usual identity politics narrative on its head. Rather than pointing to the left or Democrats as the ones focusing on race, gender, and identity, she's saying Trump and his team were the ones running an identity politics campaign. One centered around a very specific traditional idea of masculinity. By highlighting Trump's appeal to male identity, Reid challenges the notion that identity politics is exclusively a left-wing phenomenon. She's essentially saying that everyone, including Trump's camp, taps into identity politics, but in different ways. Her points about Gen X voters and white women who supported Trump add another layer. She's not just blaming candidates, but examining the cultural and generational factors that shape voting behaviors. Reed is suggesting that Gen X's cultural background and their more rugged, do-it-yourself mindset might make them more susceptible to Trump's style, which appeals to traditional values and a certain image of strength and power. The critique she makes about immigration policy, particularly the notion of racial bias regardless of legal status, is another powerful claim. She's arguing that Trump's policies might not just impact illegal immigration, but could also target immigrants of color who are here legally, legally, which adds a deeper level of concern about inclusivity and fairness in the country's policies. So, Reed's main message seems to be that the impact of identity politics is complex, cutting across both parties and multiple voter groups. Whether you agree or not, it's a bold statement that calls into question the motives behind political messaging and the influence of identity on both sides of the aisle.